Hello everyone, I'm Adam Hagen and in this video I'm going to see if I can mess up my Goblin Town terrain by adding two part epoxy resin. Stick around to the end of the video to see whether I succeed or fail. Okay, so after assembling the various components of my Goblin Town terrain, there are some noticeable gaps that I would like to fill. Back when I first started building all this, I had the idea of incorporating Gollum's Cave. And this is where I got up to. So the main structure of the rock formations was created by gluing in place these big chunks of pine bark. This little rock formation here was created by scrunching up some aluminum foil and then giving it some texture with some sculptor mold and creating a little indent in which Gollum will eventually sit. So what's next? I need to repaint it to match my more recent Goblin Town terrain before adding resin to the pool. Let's get to work. I didn't like the flat grey monotonal look of the rocks, so I reprimed it with black, gave the whole piece a rough base of grey, before using my airbrush to apply more colour. I used a range of different browns and greens to build up a mottled and grimy range of tones. The random variations of colour will give the rocks a much more natural look. I went over the whole piece with sapia ink and brown and black washes to help tie everything together tone-wise, concentrating on certain areas to provide more depth. An airbrush is a fantastic tool for this technique, making the process so much faster and more fun than with a standard brush, and is well worth the investment. I used a sponge to lightly apply patches of yellow ochre, which add another element to the rocks, further enhancing their realism. Dry brushing will complete the look. For this, I used light grey and removed most of the paint off the brush before using quick light strokes to brush across the textured surfaces. This really helps bring the rocks to life. I focus mostly on the raised areas that would naturally catch the light. Now I only like leeks in my garden, and in soups, so I poured some water into Gollum's pool to make sure there would be no leeks for my resin. It's a good thing I did, because it turned out there were three different leeks that need to be addressed. I used a hot glue gun to plug up the leaks with copious amounts of glue, and used a craft stick to gently mush the glue into any holes, and realised that I'd need to repaint all this again. Before I did this though, I used a lighter to burn off the stringy bits of glue. I then checked again for leaks by pouring water into what would hopefully be a fully sealed pool. It's holding. Thank goodness. Five minutes later. Um, okay, no, it's not holding. Seems like it was just a delayed leak. Um, so I've had to plug up a couple more gaps, including this one on the outside, um, just here. Uh, and so far, it looks to be holding. After repainting for the third time, my wife pointed out the fact that there should be fish skeletons. And to my annoyance, she was absolutely right. So first up, let's try some sculpting with green stuff. Using some sculpting tools, I shaped a tiny blob into a triangular shape to represent the fish head, pressed in an eye socket and used a scalpel to cut the mouth. After making a couple of these fish heads, I then attempted to make a whole fish skeleton. This was really fiddly and annoying, and actually a bit of a disaster when it came to trying to transfer onto the terrain piece itself. It turned out to be easier to start with a head and then add a small skinny sausage shaped bit of green stuff directly to the terrain before sculpting the impression of a rib cage. Okay, now to try and blend these little green stuff fish skeletons in, I'm going to crunch up a bunch of these little resin bones and then I've got these tiny little twigs which I'm hoping, will, once painted up, will create the impression of bones. Before adding those extra elements, I decided to use a big blob of green stuff to add extra volume to Gollum's garbage pile. I carved the vague texture of multiple fish skeletons, trusting that the addition of the other bits and pieces would help to make it look a bit more convincing. Next I applied some super glue before adding little broken bits of bones. The odd intact hand, foot and skull will represent skeletons from the occasional goblin imp that Gollum has managed to throttle. The addition of tiny little twigs adds to the general look of fine bones carelessly cast away during Gollum's long brooding in the dark. 
Using some hobby glue, I then added some tiny bits of broken slate and then sealed all the different elements in place using some watered down Mod Podge. Once dry, I went over these areas again with the airbrush. Fourth time now. I made an effort to keep to the same palette as the rest of the rocks, but to focus more browns into the trash pile to make it look really filthy. To the 7,000 crafting crusaders who have subscribed, and to the 80% of you who watch our videos and have not yet subscribed, truly thank you. And here's a special thanks to my amazing patrons, whose continued support I sincerely appreciate. Joining the 3D Games Patreon is a great way to support the channel and grants you extra perks like access to our Discord server, works in progress updates, as well as some prize draws which will be happening very soon, and even some of these snazzy 3D Games dice. Ok, back to the painting. So once I'd finished with the airbrushing, I then roughly dry brushed the bones with yellow ochre to enhance the various textures. I used a fine brush to paint some of the details the fish skeletons and bones to give them more prominence within the piece. The hope is that these details that will eventually be submerged in resin will still be vaguely visible and add to the overall character. With the painting complete, I'm really happy with the look and now it's time to add the resin. Okay, the time has come. I'm finally finished with the painting. I'm happy with how it's looking and it's time to add the resin. So I've got here from Barnes, I got this 20% off, but it's still pretty expensive. So I'm really hoping that this works out. I'm only gonna use a little bit of it. So this is kind of, I guess a bit of a test before I do anything really large with this stuff. But even so, I've still put many hours into making this little uh, golem's cave, so I, I really want it to work. Anyway, it's time. I've been putting it off for far too long, and it's time to get on with it. Let's get into it. The resin is mixed at a 1 to 2 ratio, and has a working time of 2 hours. I had pre-measured using water, so knew I needed about 60ml to fill the pool. To give my water feature a slimy look, I mixed a few drops of Vallejo Camo Green and Burnt Umber, making sure to mix it in straight away. Once I was happy with the colour, I carefully poured it into the pool, letting the resin fill the space naturally. I used a toothpick to feather the edges so they would blend convincingly with the shore. This resin has a 24 hour curing time, so the bubbles should dissipate naturally. I wanted to be absolutely sure of this though, and so used a lighter to pop any surface bubbles. So far so good, I haven't spotted any leaks, so I'm going to cover the whole thing in a container so that it avoids any dust getting stuck in there. And then I'm just going to leave it to sit. Okay, so I've left it for twice the recommended 24 hours curing time, and now for the moment of truth. No leaks that I can see, so far so good. How about we give it a cheeky poke? Rock hard! Well, the colour looks very grimy and slimy, and you can still make out the bones rotting away inside the pool. So this resin was actually really easy to work with, and now I feel confident to try it out on a larger water feature in a future project. Please let me know what you think in the comments, your own experiences, some hot tips. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell. Next I'll be adding some Goblin Town structures so that it can be incorporated into my board. So I'll see you next time on 3D Games. Until then, good hobbying everyone.